Hi, today we're going to talk about semiconductors. All right, semiconductors, you've heard of them, I'm sure, because of Silicon Valley. Um, they've totally revolutionized our computers. Uh, here are some examples of semiconductors. It's going to be carbon, silicon, and germanium. And the reason why they're special is because they only have four valence electrons. So a semiconductor cannot conduct electricity easily, but we can encourage it to conduct electricity with an input of energy. Um, and that's what you're going to see in this example. Essentially what this does, because we put in this little input of energy, it creates an on off switch. And that's exactly where our logic comes from for um, our computers. Um, those little semiconductors, the um, chips, the silicon chips that we have, they're using semiconductors to do on, off, on, off for the 1010 binary codes. Kind of cool. Um, now, you'll find this really, really interesting. In these semiconductors, they actually have delocalized electrons. Now, the only place that we've talked about delocalized electrons is metallic bonding, the sea of electrons. Well, in reality, um, as a solid, carbon and the sil um, silicon and germanium, they can have these delocalized electrons. But here's what's different. In metallic bonding, um, there's just a small, small little energy gap, so small that um, current can easily move, electrons can easily move, and so electrons, um, when they move, that creates current. Um, that happens seamlessly, really, really smoothly with these sea of electrons on top of metals, those electrons moving and ebbing and flowing. Um, What's different for semiconductors is, yes, the electrons are delocalized, but there is what's called a band gap. Um, they're separated by two bands. There's what's called the valence band and the conduction band. And let me give you a visual of this. So here would be a basic semiconductor. So let's say silicon. I put CB for conduction band. It has no electrons in it. And then the VB is for valence band. That is what contains the electrons. Those are the delocalized electrons. And then the space in between there is called the band gap, the band gap. Um, let's see here. So as I mentioned, the valence band contains the electrons. The conduction band doesn't have any electrons. But what happens is the electron can move from the valence band to the conduction band if you put just a little bit of energy into it. Um, and this is interesting, thermal energy. You can actually put thermal energy into it and it will make an electron move from the valence band to the conduction band. Um, as you increase temperature, you're going to increase the conductivity. We'll put an electrical potential in it. That's how we're going to control these, um, is with um, the energy being electrical. So we'll apply some sort of electrical potential to this, and notice I put a circle. That's called a hole, a positive hole. The electron moves from the valence band to the conduction band. Now when it jumps to that conduction band, so we've applied this little um, current right here. Notice the electron is going to travel in that direction, the left direction, and the hole travels in the right direction. That electron moving creates a tiny, tiny bit of current, um, and it's the current that we're interested in. Um, so that's at the very, very basic what happens with semiconductors. Now, an intrinsic semiconductor, this is a physical property of um, of the, uh, the element itself. So again, this would be like the carbon, the silicon, germanium. This is just an intrinsic property that they have those delocalized electrons in the valence band and they can move to the conduction band. Now we have extrinsic semiconductors and this is where we do some tweaking. It is called adding a dopant, D-O-P-A-N-T, adding a dopant, we're doping. Um, and that simply means that we add a couple of different atoms to the intrinsic semiconductor. So we have two types of doping. We are going to have p-doping and n-doping. In p-doping, we're going to add an, um, an element that doesn't have four valence electrons. In fact, it has less valence electrons. So a really, really good example of a p-doping is aluminum. So because aluminum only has three valence electrons, in essence, it adds these positive holes. If you put the aluminum, um, maybe um, one aluminum with four silicon um, atoms, the aluminum has one less uh, valence electron, and so that's going to create that positive hole. This, in essence, creates what we call an acceptor level, and let me give you a visual on this. So here's my conduction band, and there's the valence band, just like up here, what we see naturally in the silicon or the carbon. Um, 
but by adding doping some of these aluminums, it creates this acceptor level. level. I put AL for acceptor level. Um, and in essence, it makes the jump of the electron from valence band to the higher this um, acceptor level, it makes the jump smaller. So it's going to be easier for it to move to uh, that acceptor level. And then same situation happens. We'll apply just a little bit of a, um, a current, at, um, an electrical potential, excuse me, to this. So the electron moves to the acceptor level, the electron moves this way to the left, the hole moves that way to the right, and we created a current and it was a little bit easier to create that current. Um, now, N-doping. N-doping is when you're going to add um, an element to your basic intrinsic semicup, um, semiconductor like silicon, uh, but this time the element has more valence electrons than four. So here's an example. We're going to add phosphorus. Phosphorus has five valence electrons, so it has one more electron, extra, an extra electron, if you will. So the phosphorus adds this negative charge, it adds the electrons with what's called a donor level. And again, in essence, what this does is it makes that band gap smaller, so it's easier for the electrons to move. Um, so here we have it. Again, our very, very basic, there's their conductor band. Here is the, or the, sorry, the conduction band. Here's the valence band. And then in the middle is the donor level. So we have, um, because we added phosphorus, we have extra electrons. So here are your extra electrons from that phosphorus. So again, um, an electron moves from the donor level to the um, conduction band. And notice that gap, that band gap is smaller, just like the band gap was smaller on the acceptor level. So we have a smaller band gap. Um, and again, when that electron moves, the electron will migrate to the left, the hole migrates to the right, and that creates the current. Um, if you were doing AP chemistry, it's the P-doping and the N-doping um, that uh, is written in the framework. So you want to be familiar with p-doping that adds the positive holes with an acceptor level, uh, makes the band gap smaller, and n-doping that adds the extra electrons by having that donor level also making the band gap smaller. Now you will appreciate this. Um, we can do both the n-doping and the p-doping with something like a gallium arsenide, a gallium arsenide. So I have that acceptor level, uh, acceptor level and the donor level. Um, and that makes a, a good semiconductor. Um, so you can add the gallium arsenide to our intrinsic semiconductor like a silicon. If you like this, material science engineering is where you need to go. You could even get like a bachelor's in, in chemistry or a bachelor's in chemical engineering and then do a master's in material science. If you like this, Man, great field, material science engineering. If you have any other questions on solids, check out Lean Think uh, for the YouTube channel or leanthink.org. Um, have a good day and good work. I'm impressed that you're learning about semiconductors. Thanks.